uh, Singaporeans are now more well traveled they are cosmopolitan and you mentioned that our society may split along fault lines such as uh, LGBT issues and uh, uh, social and political fault lines so my qu first question is how does the government engage the special interest groups such as uh, environment groups or LGBT groups my second question relates to political renewal, which you mentioned uh, good leadership is key at the end of your lecture. So uh, on many occasions, you mentioned at different forums that uh, attracting talent from the private sector is, has been difficult. So in view of the impending elections, can you give us an update of uh, the success of the People's Action Party in attracting talent from the private wow. sector? Thank you. May, may I interrupt here that it's not really because I'm not trying to uh, prevent an interesting question from being asked. It's that I have five minutes left. So if I may, because we generally would not like to have to prevent people from asking questions. If I could, if you agree, sir, could I ask each of the other people, there's so many of them, could I ask them just to quickly come up to the mic and ask the questions that they I have? I think you can, and then but you have too many. Maybe the next two then. Yes, okay. And then perhaps you could... <coughs> I'll summarize. You would summarize yes, how yes. you would like to take the questions. Yes. So could I have two more persons from this side, two more from here, ask your questions, and then PM <coughs> will just summarize it and decide how he want, wishes to, to round off with a final answer. You, I'm a father of two, and I did some volunteer work with uh, uh, problem youth in, uh, uh, from, uh, as a volunteer work. Uh, my question is actually that uh, given that Singaporeans are so... Uh, Singaporean youth are getting smaller and smaller numbers, um, and every year we lose uh, uh, our, some of our youth uh, through, uh, through the system. Uh, wouldn't it be better for the country if we devote more resources uh, into our education, having more teachers uh, that ha can help to identify uh, problem youth, um, grow them, uh, prevent them from going down the wrong path before something actually happens? Uh, that's my question. Thank you. Uh, next person, please. I'd like to know if you agree with the notion that solving the Gini coefficient issue or tackling income inequality as a whole would help address each of the issues that you named in your speech, economics, demographics, and identity. And if so, what exactly is the government looking to do to solve this issue? Thank you. Two more from this side. Uh, good evening, uh, Prime Minister, Mr. Lee. And my question is regarding just now you say that uh, you mentioned the importance of technology in improving the productivity. But I feel that uh, utilized by using technology, there will be a loose loss <coughs> of humanity. Hence, I think the sense of humanity has a close relationship with you know, what you have mentioned, such as identity. So how should Singapore find a balance between uh, of using technology? Thank you. I'd like to ask PM where he thinks the concept of graciousness fits onto the national agenda, graciousness as in the value. My perspective is that it facilitates everyday interactions and basically enhances quality of life. So I'd like to ask PM where he thinks it fits onto the national agenda. Thank you. Thank you. PM, it's not easy. You've got a very You've covered the whole <laughs> ground. I need another lecture. <laughs> but I would say on, on identity, Yes, the government has been working hard to engage groups, but the groups also must want to engage not just the government, but each other. And it's not easy between the pro-gay groups and the anti-gay groups. I think the gulf is quite deep. It's not easy to establish a dialogue. But unless people are prepared to have some give and take on many issues, and if each one insists that what I want is my absolute right, I think we are going to fracture and have schisms amongst ourselves. That would be very serious. Uh, we really want a society which is cohesive, and graciousness is an important part of this. Graciousness meaning we, we care about each other, we feel for each other. We are not just in a rat race, but we are in a team together. The Japanese are good at that. The Chinese in China, I think they have changed because under the communist system and then now under the the, the market reforms, the competition is ferocious and each person is out and if you have heard about their higher examinations, cow cow, you will know what kind of a system, what kind of pressures are on the students there and it 
continues into the workforce. And we want to maintain something which is different, where we compete, we compete hard, but at the same time we work together and we feel together. And I think graciousness, therefore, is an important part of this. We may be losing some of this, maybe because of pressures, maybe because we are more focused on small families, we don't have extended families, maybe because uh, we, we are more concerned with materialistic goals. But I think that this is something which we do have to worry about and where the government has some role setting the tone. Um, and that extends also to what Ken said about putting resources to troubled youth, which I agree with you. Yes, we should do. We are doing it. And that extends also to what Ben says about the Gini coefficient. It's not easy for us to decree a more equal society. These are very deep economic forces. But you do want to build a society where we have a chance for everybody to feel that he is respected and he has a valued place. And you do not want to be a place where if you are rich, you live in one little circle. If you are poor, you are cut out from that circle. We are all Singaporeans together. We all eat at hawker centers from time to time. We all visit the same places. Even when we go on holiday, we don't go on such drastically different places for holiday. And we meet each other overseas. And I think that is the right sort of society we want to be. If we can do that, if we can keep that sense, then I think there'll be uh, uh, the social matrix, the basis on which people will say, yes, I want to get married, I want to start a family. One kid is nice, two is better, two are nice, three would be even better. <laughs> and at the same time, be able to find the right balance between that and growing the economy and having, trying for new things. We're making sure that tomorrow will be better and you can do that, then I think we will have a good 50 years ahead of us.